Today we're doing pangolins. Pangolins are in the order of Phyllodota. They're the only mammals that are in this order. Their closest relatives are the carnivores. Currently, there's only eight extant species of pangolin. Four of them live in Asia and four of them live in Africa. They're the only mammal that has keratin um, scales on their back, which is like the same material that your fingernails are made of, which is the same material that reptiles' scales are made out of. They're um, myrmecophages, which means they eat ants or termites almost exclusively. They have a really long sticky tongue. They've got uh, claws that they can use to dig. These keratinized scales actually come in handy. The pangolins can wrap themselves up into a really tough ball. That's a good anti-predatory defense mechanism. There's a local legend that pangolins will have these ant baths where if the pangolin goes digging around in an anthill, the ants come up. And so what the pangolin will do is crush its scales down and crush all of the ants underneath. And then the pangolin can go down to a river. It'll release the scales and all the dead ants will float up to the surface of the water. And then the pangolin can eat those ants. I haven't found a lot of published evidence that this actually happens, but there is evidence that pangolins will go to the water after eating ants whether this is to collect the dead ants or just to like soothe their skin because it probably does hurt eating like from an anthill. They're edentes, so they don't have front teeth. That makes it a lot easier to be um, eating ants. You like stick your tongue out and then you like floop it back in. Uh, all the ants that would get caught on your front teeth just like go right, right down into your mouth. On a bit of a heavier side, pangolins are the most trafficked animal in the world. They're used for meat. They're used for a lot of... Um, medicinal purposes. This has resulted in pangolins being highly endangered. So this uh, high trafficking rate has sort of gotten pangolins where they are today in the coronavirus case. So when the coronavirus first started appearing in Wuhan, there was a large gathering of people that got the virus were um, thought to have all visited a market where wildlife trafficking was going on. So it was thought that this disease had passed over from some animal that was in the market. They did a comparison of um, a coronavirus that has been infecting humans with one that was found in pangolin. There was a 99% similarity in a protein binding region where the virus would be able to connect to a human cell and infect. So in that region, there's a lot of similarity between the pangolins and the humans, but then elsewhere, the similarity is a bit lower and it's looking more similar to a coronavirus that's found in bats. So people are thinking that this coronavirus is actually like a hybrid between the one in the pangolins and the one in the bats and the, the viruses have recombined and that's what's infecting humans right now. What this means for pangolins, China has actually permanently shut down all wildlife trafficking in the country as a result of this. There's also been like a huge drop in demand for pangolin meat, both in Africa and in Asia as a result of this. But also when an animal gets tied up into this type of situation where they're a potential source for um, a major human disease in the past, that's not always gone really well for animals. So back in 2002 and 2003, when the SARS virus was going around, it was found that palm civets uh, were actually an intermediate host for the virus and then that was passing over to humans and there was a mass slaughter of palm civets that happened after that. So it's important to know that the coronavirus isn't the pangolin's fault, but rather this is a good opportunity to protect pangolins and protect humans. By working to mitigate wildlife trafficking, we can help prevent these types of interactions that could allow major disease to spread like this in the future.